Yeah, that's so great because I was thinking about this. Like even like when you mentioned Steve Bach, Bachman's name, I know that um, you kind of found out about me through um, the apologetics March Madness thing that happened yeah. last year um, and is happening now. Um, and I remember in, in it was towards the end there was this guy that was tweeting that was like Ravi scam. Um, and it was talking about um, just how like Ravi's this terrible person and like all these things. And I was like this guy just has it out for Ravi. So I was like, I just blocked him. And I was like, I was just done with it because I just assumed that like these things were false. Um, so what do we do about like things like that? Like we brought so much attention to him, not through just like the apologetics, March Madness, but he was like so praised by so many people. Two million like, when his death people. Came and Two million he, people tuned into his funeral. I think the day of or something or within the first weekend. Like that's, mm -hmm. those are outrageous numbers. I, I, yeah, Zach, you're right. I met you through uh, last year's Mar uh, apologetics March Madness yeah. on our team posted the link to vote on on your twitter and they said mm -hmm. hey guys like ravi is is in the you know the final weeks of his life like let's make sure our guy wins and so yeah. all of us apologists were like saying it to our, our siblings our parents like vote for ravi and he won and we were so like people were like yes like this is a fitting mm -hmm. fitting end to a race well run yeah well, that's how i met up met you and then i was so honored when you had i think you said you committed to the first week after ravi's death that every tweet you did would have the hashtag, thank you, Ravi. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was just like, so like, I don't know who Zach is, but I trust him. He's a good dude. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, then months later, I got to FaceTime with uh, Steve, uh, Max Baker Heitch, RZM apologist and prof at Oxford, um, let us, uh, yeah, introduced us. So we were FaceTiming and I got to say to him, hey, Steve, like, because he apologized. He's like, I know I'm really harsh online, but I actually believe in you young guys. And like, and, and mm -hmm. I said, hey, like, uh, C.S. Lewis said something to the effect of, a friend is someone who sings the song of your heart when you've forgotten it. It's like, Steve, I never thought I'd say this because I thought you were enemy number one, like mm -hmm. number one, but like you've been a friend to us. Christian yeah. you have called us to truth, to integrity when we were ignoring this stuff. So you're a real friend. And then at one point I, uh, I thought, uh, I wonder who I've blocked on Twitter. Like I haven't blocked anyone in forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never blocked anybody. And I went to my, I found where it says you, who you blocked. And like, Steve was one of the only people I'd ever blocked yeah. besides some like really like pornographic, whatever Twitter thing coming mm -hmm. off the website block, you know? But it was like that and, and Steve. And I was like, oh man. So yeah, I had to unblock Steve and send him a note just saying, hey man, thanks for being a real friend. Um, mm -hmm. another, another example is like Julie Royce is someone, the Royce Report uh, at RZAM. Yeah, I didn't know of her until I joined the team. And pretty quickly I saw, oh, this is someone who's so committed to defaming the gospel because she was mm -hmm. someone who was like advocating for Lori Ann Thompson, Shirley Stewart, another survivor of rabbis who came forward while he was still alive. And uh, yeah, I, I, over time, I began to see that Julie is someone who, contrary to what I thought, loves Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. loves the gospel, and is ferociously committed to exposing uh, the frauds within within the church and so um just today actually um I, te I texted her saying like hey like thank you for your latest article really hard to read i feel like so many people that i've treasured uh you're exposing them as actual frauds and it hurts but it's it's healthy and i mentioned how it like, gets tough on my faith it's tough on my relationship to god right now like it, it really is, sh is, is 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 shattering parts of of me and and so it was just such a, a privilege man that like here I have Julie Royce, who I have bad mo with myself to colleagues at RZAM ministering to me. And just mm -hmm. she was texting me. I wonder here, I grab my phone. I just want to read to you what she was saying. Because I just I never a year ago I could never have imagined any, yeah, just mm -hmm. Steve or her ministering to my soul. But um yeah, just I'm like, hey, I'm feeling shattered in my faith. And she wrote back and said, um, Romans three, three to four. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not mm -hmm. at all. Let God be true and every man a liar. And she, yeah, just texted like a prayer and, and, and more about like, hey, uh, the Bible is very honest that there will be wolves. And uh, like none of this is a surprise to God. This this all actually affirms what you what you see in scripture. Um, Daniel, like you can keep trusting Jesus. Um, yeah.